I want to invite to the stage one of the Global Compact's oldest friends and co-architect, John Ruggie. From 1997 to 2001, Professor Ruggie served as UN Assistant Secretary General for Strategic Planning. Among his responsibilities was the creation with Jorg of the UN Global Compact. In 2012, Professor Ruggie was appointed the UN Special Representative for Business and Human Rights. Six years later, the UN Human Rights Council unanimously endorsed the guiding principles on business and human rights that Ruggie developed. Now, he is an esteemed professor at Harvard University. So please welcome to the stage, John Ruggie. Thank you very much. You've noticed that all the speeches today began with a hierarchy. Um, excellencies, honored guests, riffraff. Uh, I think we're all excellent. Let's give ourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> now, my, my task this evening is absolutely superfluous, so I'm going to be very quick. Um, I, I'm supposed to introduce Georg Kell. Uh, a man um, who, of course, none of you know and, and, and don't respect immensely and have worked with for the last 15 years. Uh, but, you know, um, these kinds of rituals are the bonds of social solidarity, so I carry on. A few words about the Global Compact and then about Georg. The Global Compact um, is a, an interesting offspring in that it was unintended. Um, of course, we were delighted once it was conceived. It was unintended in the sense that it was originally a speech that Kofi Annan had been invited to give in Davos in January 1999. Now, this was 10 months or so before the famous Battle of Seattle where civil society protesters and others shut down a WTO ministerial meeting and, and bashed up the city. Kofi Annan and Georg and I already sensed at the time the fragility of globalization. And so the Secretary General Kofi Annan asked us to work on a, on a presentation that he might give in Davos if it were sufficiently challenging to business. Now, the challenge that Kofi Annan put before the business leaders at Davos was very simple. If we cannot make globalization work for everyone, in the end, it will work for no one. So you, the business community, benefit enormously from open markets. Help us make them fairer. They need social pillars. They need environmental pillars. The forces of globalization left to themselves are too destructive of the social fabric and of our common planet. Now, what happened then was that the speech was so well received that we were compelled to turn it into a program. And that's how the Global Compact was born, with zero budget and one and a half people. Today, as we've heard, it is not only the largest corporate citizenship initiative in the world, I think even more importantly, it's by far the most geographically inclusive. And that's what makes the difference. It has a global presence and it has national networks. And it's become a movement. And the person, of course, who brought us here is Georg. Georg is unique. He has the zeal of a missionary. He has the grasp of technical issues befitting of the engineer that he was trained to be. And he practices political wizardry. And that you need to survive in the United Nations. His ideas are big and bold, but he's utterly pragmatic in how he achieves them or seeks 
to achieve them. He is intense, but he loves to laugh. Ego satisfaction is irrelevant. It's the mission that counts. He inspires people, and yet he remains humble. And the immense energy that he brings to the task, where does he get it from? Occasional retreats to the forest in the Adirondacks or communing with cows in the Bavarian Alps. Tonight, we celebrate the teenager that the Global Compact, this offspring with three fathers, has become. We thank Uncle Ban for providing a supportive environment, allowing it to grow and to flourish. And of course, we thank Georg for his immense contributions. We wish both the Global Compact and, the, and Georg, and of course, Lisa, all the best in their future um, endeavors. Georg, it's been a blast. Thank you.